and um, Mr. Robert Seamus, we have you down. It's now I'd like to read the proclamation. The proclamation reads as follows. A proclamation by the Mayor and City Council of Statesboro, Georgia, Arbor Day. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas the holiday called Arbor Day was, the first, was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling costs, <coughs> moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, our fires and countless other wood products. Whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of businesses, business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now, therefore, I, Jonathan McCollum, Mayor of the City of Statesboro, do hereby proclaim February 15, 2019 as Arbor Day in the City of Statesboro. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support efforts of, to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant and care for trees, to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and future generations. This, I dated this fifth day of February, in the year 2019. <laughs> Tree Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> the winner gets a product of a tree. <laughs> All right. He wins. And if um, no council member gets uh, is the winner, the city attorney is going to get the get the <laughs> so, so, he he, so he's the default. Okay. Liz is going to call you out after after the questions read, and you give me after the answer is read, you're going to give me the answer in the form of a question. For example, what is a maple tree? Okay? Right. Every answer is a tree. When I finish reading the question, you raise your hand. All right. Like Wesley, whoa. Do not be like, do you know what I did? We phone a friend or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's all on you. It's all on you. Okay. First question. This tree is not dead and is the state tree of Georgia. What is the live oak? What is the live oak? Woo! 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 This tree, native to Georgia, creates arguments over how to pronounce its name. And its nuts can be found in pies on Thanksgiving what is the pecan? tables. Or pecan. Oh, you do. Oh, I, I like the I like the You gotta wait for the questions. I just wanted to make sure no one okay. mispronounced that. Okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go. No, all right, go ahead. That's a pecan. Correct. There you go. Okay. Not a pecan. Not a pecan. Okay, this 
Uh, this flowering canine tree, native to Georgia, can be found up and down Savannah Avenue in Statesboro. Correct. There you go. Okay. Four. Two more. Okay. George Washington would not tell a lie about this tree, which can be found in the medians of Park Avenue. What's the cherry tree? Red. Like we got a tie here. This would be a tiebreaker. Number five is the last one. It's a tie. It goes to the city attorney. <laughs> <laughs> this tree is not a nightmare, and it can be found lining East Main Street. What is now? Correct. There you go. Good job. Good job. Jeopardy. And thank you for supporting our tree board and thank you for supporting Arbor Day. I'd like to give you a, a few benefits of our trees. It cleans the air and water, beautifies our city, provides home for wildlife, conserves energy, and provides products like paper and lumber. Um, we'd like to invite all of you to our Arbor Day celebration, which we held March 1st at Statesboro Dog Park for, and in conjunction with Statesboro DSDA's first Friday. So they're on calendars. Thank you. Alright, right, so we'll move down to uh, agenda item B2, which is recognition of the city's participation in the Tree City USA program. Doug Chesero, uh, Chief uh, Chief Ranger of the Georgia Forestry Commission, will discuss the Tree City USA program and present to the Mayor Council with the, uh, the Tree City USA flag. Mayor, we could. We also um, introduce our new community forester, yeah. Alex Bowler. Yes, absolutely. Alex is coming to us uh, from Mississippi. Yeah, I started in November, and uh, I'm the community forester for the South Region of Georgia. And any of y'all have any questions on the outreach for the Okay. Well, good things come out of Mississippi. That's where my wife is from. So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What, what part of Mississippi are you from? North Mississippi, Grenada. Grenada? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's from Jackson, Mississippi. I'm right in between Jackson and Memphis. Yeah, that's, there you go. There you go. I don't go that far. I stop in Jackson. <laughs> Jackson, right? Maybe go to Lexington a little bit. <laughs> absolutely. Go right ahead. Good morning. I'm Doug Satcher. I'm the Chief Ranger of Louisville County. Uh, I'm going to present. Tree City USA flag just came in yesterday. Uh, 26 years. Mm. It's kind of it's kind of a milestone for me because I remember the first Tree City USA. It kind of showed my age with the Georgia Park Commission. <laughs> first city of states were. Uh, this was Michael Henson. He's the management for Bullock County. City of states were. Mayor, if I could real yes, quick, um, with recognizing the True Board of Education Commission here, through their efforts, the City of Statesboro has seen over 2,000 trees planted within the City of Statesboro this past year, either by projects they have supported or worked on, 
or by the uh, city green space ordinance having a tree canopy restored for developing community properties and where we're growing mm -hmm. a lot more. Um, Arbor Day this year, February 15th, um, for the state of Georgia, Georgia Southern will be holding a Arbor Day program on their campus at that time. Uh, Arbor Day Paw Walk event, we're partnering with DSDA for the downtown, at the downtown Bell Park for our uh, annual Arbor Day program where we will be installing the last of 30 trees mm -hmm. at that golf park. Um, there will also be a doggy costume contest at that location. And then we have our big event for spring in the States for April 13th downtown on East Main. And last year at that event, we gave away over 200 trees. Wow. Yes, sir. That's proud. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind. I just want to say yeah, I've been coming in this chamber for 12 years, and and there's been no group that has been consistently more active, more that, that has worked, and that, it, that has clearly done uh, amazing things over the last since again since I've been coming for 12 years, and and much of that is the Mr. Clay's leadership, and uh, he's uh, uh, been and working with Robert Siemens, the two of them together, they. They, they planned, I mean, some of these things that they're doing now, they planned five, ten years ago. So uh, I just want to say thank you for everybody who does work on that commission. We, we haven't seen a more active group in, in my time. So thank you for your work. Thank you. We'll move down to agenda item 3C, which is recognition of the city of State Square Advanced Patrol Officers, Kyle Bradley and Nick Davis, who will see in the Community Service Award. Chief Brody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I could have uh, Advanced Patrol Officers Riley and Davis join me at that podium, please. So ordinarily, uh, we keep our awards in-house, more or less, but uh, these two gentlemen have, have really stepped out into the community and, and done some uh, above and beyond work. I just want to give them a little bit of public recognition for, for their efforts out in the community. So the Advanced Patrol Officer Nick Davis is getting the Community Service Award, which is a, a certificate as well as a uniform ribbon. Uh, he's been with the uh, Civil Air Patrol for more than seven years. He's currently their deputy commander. And that means that he's working at any given time with you know, 30 or more of our local youth, mentoring them and, and helping them to, to kind of introduce them to the military system and, and, and help them to advance in their skills of leadership and, and, and public service. So I just want to recognize Nick for that. He's doing a great job with them. Officer uh, Cal Riley, as you know, he's uh, one of our canine officers. He runs uh, his canine partners, Rio. Um, Kyle helped form a 501c3 nonprofit group called the Georgia Police Canine Foundation, which many of you have been involved in. It's a pretty laborious uh, process to get that recognized and, and they have great fundraising work. And their, their stated mission is to help retired canines, right? So, what we tend to do is, is we use these dogs uh, as partners, we treat them. Uh, you know, as police officers, and then we retire them and we sort of forget about them. And, and uh, so Kyle's worked through his foundation, which he's also served as, as the inaugural president of, uh, is to raise funds to, to help those dogs <coughs> medical bills uh, and, and, and you know, into the, the last phase of their life. And so doing great work. The other thing that Kyle has done we want to recognize is that, that he went to the uh, auto parts stores around town. This is the second year he's done that and, and got coupons from them to hand out so officers can take those out and when they pull somebody over for a, an equipment violation, tail light out, headlight out, something like that, uh, in addition to give them a warning or a citation, they can give them a coupon from one of these organizations to go and, and get a reduction on getting the problem fixed, which is what we really want to accomplish with that in the first place. So I uh, really stepped out above and beyond and I just want to thank all these gentlemen for, for their hard work. So. they even receive the awards that they're receiving today, um, their notoriety for the work that they do in their respective areas had already reached us. 
um, and I had the opportunity to participate in a program the Civil Air Patrol had, um, where they had, not to get the lady's position that came down. What was her position? The, um, when she, she came down a couple of months back, I think she was like a higher up in the uh, Civil Air oh, Patrol. Oh, the uh, Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Van Buren? Yes, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely. She came down to recognize the work that was being done in this community. So that was a very big deal. Um, and then the K-9 Foundation, um, their work proceeds themselves. They were one of the recipients of the Downtown Get Downs fundraiser proceeds. Um, and the community rallied around them to really show their support. So the work that, that, these, you know, that these men are doing within our community speaks for itself, and we're very fortunate to have officers like that as a part of our team. Thank you guys for all of the work that you did. Ms. Stewart, we're going to move down to agenda item four. Is, are there any, is there anyone signed up for public comments? Okay. We'll move on to agenda item five, which is consideration of a motion to approve consent agenda, approval of minutes for the January 15th council meeting. Um, and then B is a Statesboro Police Department request to surplus 12 vehicles in the Statesboro PD fleet. Is that a, a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All right. <laughs> All those in favor? All right. All right. Let's show that the agenda item is as uh, five is passed. All right. Uh, agenda item six was the consideration of a motion to approve the city of Statesboro participation in the anti-bullying day set for July 27th, uh, 2019. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, Mr. Jeff to kind of come up and discuss the anti-bullying day. Um, I know he came before us and gave us a quick briefing of, of what it was about, and we wanted to get it on the agenda as, as soon as possible so that the good people of Statesboro can throw softballs and dump the mayor into the dunking booth. I think that's what we agreed to, right? We've gotten plenty of phone calls <coughs> in participation of that event. <laughs> um, I also have a Corvette sitting up on the corner that needs some new parts, and if the chief could me out with some coupons. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Anti-bullying day speaks for itself. You go from school to school and there's a parent, parents, um, just the other day there was a lockdown at Statesboro High School because of this activity. Mm -hmm. Kids, they're not born being bullies. Mm -hmm. They learn from their environment. And this is a national epidemic. Mm -hmm. You know, the old days, you'd say to some kid, I'll meet you at 3 o'clock, we'll meet in the schoolyard, and we'll take this up. Today, violence has gone sky high. Mm -hmm. And you can be bullied through social media, at the dinner table, at 1 o'clock in the morning. And what the, game, what the goal is, is to show that adults and children were all on the same page. Mm -hmm. We want the end and conclusion to this kind of activity. We'd love the police department to come out and meet the kids mm -hmm. and, sit and show them that we're all in this together. And that was the purpose of starting the first anti-bullying day, and we're proud to say we're going to do it again. All right. Thank you. All right. is, there a, is there any comment or questions by council? No. All right. Is there a consideration of motion to approve the anti-bullying day? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Let's show that agenda item six is passed. Uh, agenda item seven is a consideration of a motion to approve uh, award of contract to A.D. Williams Construction in the amount of $129,164 for the Bullock Street Detention Facility Project. Funding is provided by Stormwater Revenues. Jason, if you'll give us some insight on that. Thank you, Mayor. Council. Uh, this project is uh, project is a, to construct a stormwater detention facility in Passive Park uh, that will be adjacent to the main drainage way. Um, this is located between Bullock Street and mm -hmm. West Grady Street along Institute Lane. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So work includes grading of approximately 1.3 acres and installation of drainage pipe, curtain gutter, sidewalk, and some additional infrastructure. So this passive, uh, passive detention facility will be very similar to what you see on Parker Street near uh, West Jones Avenue at Renaissance Park. So we solicited uh, sealed bids. Uh, first time we put bids out, uh, we did not only receive one bid, so we're not able to open those bids. Um, we put the project back out and only received two bids the second time. And A.D. Williams was a low bidder in the amount of $129,164. Oh, 
Was there any questions or comments by council? I'd like to comment the fact that um, the fact you mentioned it would be similar to a Renaissance Park, and a Renaissance Park was in Jones Street. And it, it turns out to be a good thing, so uh, the park and, uh, and the reservoir. So I know the speaker of the citizens district too, we're looking forward to that because it's been something needed. All right. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Let's show that agenda item seven is passed. We move down to agenda item number eight, which is consideration of the motion to approve resolution 2019-06 on resolution prohibiting discriminatory practices in housing. Passage of this resolution is a requirement in the application for the 2019 Community Development Block Grant. Frank, if you'll give us an insight on that. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. As you remember from the last uh, city council meeting, we approved the resolution to uh, uh, apply for the CDBG application. They have adopted some new rules and regulations this cycle, and this is one of them. You'll see uh, there's a list of one through five. There are some items we'll have to uh, make sure we do during that process. If you're awarded, we just ask that you adopt this resolution for the CDBG. All right. Any questions about council? Frank, what project is this for? This is for the uh, stormwater, water sewer. It's really an extension of the old CDBG. Same area there because we didn't have enough money. Oh, that's right. It's like a phase two, Second right? Phase. Okay. okay. We didn't have the funds on the previous one. Yeah, that project. Okay. All right. Thank you, Frank. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, excuse me. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is that second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're going to move down to um, uh, agenda item nine uh, on the other business. Um, the uh, work session, we decided not to move forward with that work session. I believe that's what, we, that's what the decision was on that. Um, so we move down to agenda item 10, which is the city manager's comments. Mayor, before you go to that, I have a comment on the line. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of tires in addition to and throughout the city. And what I like to suggest, oh, okay. repeat what you just said. I know. Tires, like okay. tires. Yeah. Not tires. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to suggest that the you know, city would consider a pickup maybe twice a year. Uh, we advertise through our social media and, and the website and the citizens know that we're going to pick up our tires at least twice a year. And that's something to consider. Because we're not getting a better problem. Okay. And I, and I wonder, Jason, I've had uh, to deal with a couple of roll-off containers here over the past few months. And people will just drive by and throw tires in there. Is, is that an issue that you guys are dealing with uh, through the... Solid waste. It is. Um, that's one of the prohibited items that we don't typically pick up. Um, we discourage. However, it, it has become a nuisance. Um, I've talked with staff recently about um, making sure we clean this up. And I actually had planned uh, as part of our um, Great American Cleanup Spring in the Statesboro event uh, doing a sweep and, and cleaning up some tires. Um, but we can definitely look at trying to expedite that. Do we know where these tires are coming from? Because I know when you and I was discussing a particular project, there was actually a tire uh, that was stuck in a drainage. As a matter of fact, it was in your district. Uh, a tire that was stuck in a drainage, and that drainage was actually um, having some, um, some, some flooding issues because uh, it wasn't properly. Yeah, so do we know where these tires are coming from, or they just miraculously appear? That's right. We've talked to homeowners in which tires have been either on their property or adjacent to their property, mm -hmm. um, and they they always tell us typically that we don't know where they came from. They just showed up overnight. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm wondering, I know some of the used tire places in town don't take your old tire. So what they do is they change it, put on new tires, and then they throw your old tires in their trunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if I mean, maybe we need to look into requiring those guys for those need to be collected and disposed of properly as opposed to just throwing in somebody's trunk which ends up getting thrown in our drains, dishes, and other trash. Tires are heavily regulated by the state. And, yeah. Um, when you buy new tires, I believe the state requires you to impose fees on, on the old tires for proper disposal. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm referring to like the used tire places in town. There's a bunch of little yeah, one-man operations and I'm wondering right. if that's what it is because they don't take your old tires. We'll definitely look at that. I was not aware of that. Um, I believe some of the county recycling centers, um, and that's for all mm -hmm. county residents here, and uh, several of those centers will take used tires, uh, not from companies or businesses, but they'll take them from individual, individual residents mm -hmm. of Bullock County. Um, 
So that's that's an option for people, um, to my knowledge. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely look into the use car. I'm obviously familiar with that. <coughs> we'll try to have something back to you in March to let you know what we'll find out. Give a little bit of a tires. Jason, did you have to the companies who have accept used tires from individuals? Can you identify the companies? Um, at this time? So I'm not familiar with with businesses that um, that deal with used tires, how they deal with that. Um, but I know most businesses that we work with that uh, tires that have tires, sell tires, they usually have uh, more proper disposal methods. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, an option is to take it to the landfill. Um, they're going to charge you out there the standard tippage rate for that. Um, but a lot of people have con a lot of businesses have contracts with people that come pick the tires up, and process them, for recycle. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, Council. All right. Uh, city minutes, comments? Oh, uh, I might say something on number nine, too. Okay, go ahead. Um, Police Park, impact team, keep it up. That's good front page news. I like to see that. Uh, I like to see it every week, twice a week, three times. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to see this car with uh, 146,363,000 miles on it. Uh, I hope that's a type of. No, I know. I hope it's not a typo. It's getting through the world record. <laughs> Forty-six million miles. Um, also, the fire department um, had their um, uh, gala this weekend. Chief, we had our what? Or was it this weekend? When is it? A gala. It's, it's talking about our awards banquet. Yeah, awards banquet. No, that's the twenty-third. That's the twenty-third. I'm sorry. I thought it was. I thought it was You're a month ahead. ahead. I'm a month behind. This one. I ain't. Mm -hmm. I apologize, but uh, fire department, no, don't get to hear from y'all, and that's good. So, <laughs> thank you. All right, good, good. Anything else for the council? No? All right. All right. Now, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been talking about T-Splice for a long time, and Jason will make an introduction that we have someone who will help us for the next five years get us through all those projects. Yes, yeah, so fortunately, um, particularly right now, the department getting short staffed. Um, with the T SPLOS program, was approved the position of T SPLOS Capital Projects Manager. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm happy to announce that we've, uh, we've been able to hire a local person for that position. Okay. Uh, we um, were able to uh, hire Mr. William Cohn. Um, William's here. Okay. Mr. Cohn, how are you doing? Yeah, he's a, he's a Statesboro resident, Statesboro native, so uh, very familiar with the local uh, development community. There's all the engineers and contractors in the area. Uh, retired from Georgia Southern recently, 30 years with Georgia Southern as a project manager, so we're pleased to have him on board. All right, good. Welcome aboard, William. Thank you. Obviously, there's some frustrations. 
but uh, overall I think uh, we accomplished uh, what we intended to with these meetings, which was to um, be, be transparent with what the issues are and then what we are doing to address them and then update them with the, uh, the information as we, we get it. Um, we have uh, three uh, additional meetings that we will be holding. Um, they're all the next three Mondays, basically. The 11th will be at Trinity uh, Church there at uh, the Bypass and that's Cypress Lake or Country Club. One of those two, but that church that sits right there. Country Club. Uh, the 18th will be at William James uh, School out on 80. Uh, and then the 25th will be at Langston Chapel. Uh, I think it's the elementary school. Um, but uh, they're all 6 to 8. Um, so we just wanted to get that word out for all those folks. We'll probably uh, we're looking into live streaming those meetings as well for folks that can't uh, make it out. So um, just wanted to, to let you guys know uh, that th that was going on and uh, so far the response has been uh, you know, positive overall. Kudos to Chief Grant and Jesse and I were talking about it after the meeting. He did an outstanding job of presenting the material. It can be very challenging for anyone to understand, even those of us that have heard it numerous times, but did an outstanding job. And the one thing, the greatest takeaway that I got from the meeting was a bunch of different people, whether it be insurance agents or mm -hmm. you all as the my representation, City and County, um, us, Jack and myself talking afterwards, um, just everybody committing to understanding and working together for the better of the future. Did you take that away? I, I did. I think that uh, it's a it's a, um, it, it's a frustrating, the circumstances that have created this is, is frustrating uh, all around. It, and it's not just one individual entity or individual that has, that has uh, you know, contributed more than any others. Um, you know, ISO, the way that they apply that, that, that classification um, the water system companies, not whether they didn't know or didn't understand what, what their responsibilities were for that, that piece of it. Um, because again, it was one of those situations of it's never been a problem in the past, mm -hmm. why is it a problem now? And um, you know, that's, that's the information we're trying to relate to the community um, and build up that, uh, that community understanding and thereby hopefully that community support to do what we need to do to address the problem and, and get what, what we need to do. To accomplish those goals. So, there was a there was a, a, a fundamental shift though in ISO. Yeah, I mean from distance to <coughs> access to water. And that is the <coughs> issue that most people are having is that some of these private waters yes, the, the, just don't have either the flow or the connection. Right. The fundamental the fundamental uh, issue that is creating this is water is the access to water. Yeah. Now, while the requirements have never changed, it's always been that five miles and a thousand feet within a hydrant, the, the, the local agent or company's ability to have flexibility in the classification they assigned is what changed. That got taken away from ISO. So now, instead of the insurance agent being able to come to the fire department and get a letter saying, yes, they're in our five mile radius, uh, yes, there's a fire hydrant here. We don't know exactly what that fire, fire hydrant will do, but it's there. Uh, that was enough to get them that credit. And now ISO is using uh, technology uh, and they know. It. And, and that's, that's, I think, the biggest piece on ISO side is how they are applying the, the classifications to the individual properties. Uh, and that flexibility on the the actual local side is, is no more. Well, and better information on the individual systems itself, yeah. I mean, they have a better idea of, like, how much flow is coming out of that um, Right, and if you don't turn in those, that data, then it's, it's not credible. But the, the way it's credited, um, the, the requirements for it to stay credited, all those things have, have, have been the same for, for a number of years, ever since I've been involved with it. Um, it's, it's really the biggest shift that, that I think has created most of it. And this isn't just a local issue. This is across yeah. the state. This is, mm -hmm. this is happening all over uh, Georgia and Alabama with the guinea pigs for this new technology. And um, it's, it's been interesting across the state. So. But the shift, is, shift is, is, it isn't anymore just having a pipe. 
now it's, you have the pipe and you know what that flow is. And you, right. have, to, you have to show that that flow is, yeah. which is really good for the homeowners because now they know that when, it, when we're out there and we're ready to draw the water, they're going to have water. So well, and the reason they ask this is because that's just another example of how much more water is becoming the important engine for whether it's economic development, whether it's fire, whether it's stormwater, whether it's you know, new sewer regulations, EPD is, I mean, it's just, I mean, so kudos again to the city staff. They saw this water issue coming months and years ago. Yeah, I mean, we, we have been on top. Yeah, we recognized it in 2015. And, um, you know, I, I used the example last night. I, I reached out to the water companies <clears throat> that, that we were aware of in the district on three separate occasions with letters, formal letters, certified letters, um, and no response. And, and I don't think it was in, you know, you know, kind of a, you know, got no interest, go away. I just don't think they understood the impact and, and their part in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but they understand now, uh, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. So, thank you very much. Right, hold on, I, I would like one final oh, comment. Sure. I do miss if I didn't uh, mention the fact that we actually got to see our fire department in action last night because they received a call during the meeting. <laughs> within seconds, the guys were on the trucks and leaving. So that's yeah. a pretty cool thing to witness. So. Yeah. You 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 uh, spurred a little extra motivation than getting out of station in a hurry. So <laughs> would you like to park? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go to the truck. Tim thought that might be missed. <laughs> I think it happened. Really we all kind of wanted to get out of there. <laughs> so 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 the final thing is is either Frank or Jason. We're going to have to have a special meeting February what for the CDBG. Do we know the date? So these guys can start to plan on the calendar. On the 20th? 20th. And that's Wednesday. I think proposals are due from consultants and engineers um, for to administer the CDG program are due on the 19th, I believe. So as quickly as we can get through those applications, those RFQs that are submitted, so we're trying to get this turnaround because we're up against a pretty hard deadline. So probably the next first part of April. It could be the next meeting, the 26th, maybe. Well, the 19th is the next meeting. Yeah. Well, we won't be to get it on the 19th. Yeah, we can't yeah. get it on the 19th. That's it. We're on the 26th. Well, we could, we could get it on the 26th. And that would be a little set over there. So we're going to try to do our part as quickly as possible and we'll get back to you. Just want to say this. And then you just got to make sure that Sue has. Thursday morning, Friday morning? You just got to make sure. Uh, yeah, we just going to make sure Sue has 24 hours. Too. Okay. So, we just want y'all to know that something's coming up. All right. That's it. All right. Um, are there any public comments? All right. Seeing that there are none, um, we'll move now to agenda item 12, which is consideration of a motion to enter into executive sessions to discuss personnel matters, real estate, and or potential litigation in accordance with OCGA 50-14-3B. Um, is there a motion to enter into executive session? Okay. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know I saw the streets. Sorry about that. I knew you. I knew it. I knew it was coming out. But um, the thing last night made me think that it was going to be on Saturday night. I apologize. Uh,